Joining us today for the first time at the 417, please give a big round of applause for one of video gaming and acting's rising stars. Give it up for Becca Pruitt. How are we doing this morning? Great, I'm so glad to see you. Oh, we got a mic right there. Oh, I'm so loud. <laughs> That's one of the things that I have to kind of be cognizant of because I'm pretty loud, but when I'm on a mic, I gotta make sure that we don't scream. Yes, yes. How are you this morning? Listen, dandiest candy. This Sunday's mission gone people. probably the best I've been. Uh, at the Mojo Party on Saturdays, you know, we we all kind of. Let's just say that the uh, alcohol in the Mojo drinks uh, kind of sneak up on you a little bit. I'm so. still today, though. Well, <laughs> so, like so I paced myself well. Yeah. Last year, I was just telling them kind of in the stage, uh, or rather in the audience, that uh, I was interviewing George Lowe, who, as you guys may or may not know, is Space Ghost from Space Ghost Coast to Coast, Bill mm -hmm. Swim. Um, very, very unique individual uh, in the best way possible. But I got five words in, and he just talked the rest of the way, and honestly, is exactly what I needed. <laughs> So, but much more battle ready today. All right. So, Becca, we got so much to talk about, and but I wanted to start us off with how we got here today. Now, did young Becca Pruitt know that she was going to be uh, an actor, not only in on stage roles and theater, but also uh, screen acting and video games? No. Well, I mean, I, I knew I was uh, a little ham. But um, honestly, I had a shy phase, like a super, super shy phase too. So um, yeah, I, as a kid, sometimes like I think we go through different, different, you know, places in our life. So at one point, I was like hiding behind my mom all the time, and at one point, you know, I was like jumping out, like I want to try that. Um, I think so. When I was younger, I grew up actually from not people see me like, oh, she's she's middle to upper class and she has some money and she's you know kind of cultured. No, I grew up pretty dirt poor, actually. And um, I have, a, my mom and I lived with my grandparents when I was like three years old because of his health conditions, he'd had a heart attack. And um, my mom's a single parent mom, so we moved in to help with them. And uh, so I grew up out in the country in Ohio and being a, on television or being you know, a performer was not something that you know, anyone did from Cincinnati, Ohio. I grew up in a little town from like 45 minutes north of that. And, um, but I had an awesome family, and my mom has um, eight siblings, so I have like 21 first cousins on my mom's side. So you have a big crazy family, which I adore. And, uh, but, you know, when you have so many people, you know, you're just kind of one of the masses, you know? Um, you're not like a, you know, a single child, yes, but I had all my cousins over all the time, my mom raised my other cousin. So, you know, it was just a, a big crazy group of us. Um, but at one point, like, cause I, I couldn't participate in extra school, extra, um, extra curricular activities because it was costly. And so, but at one point, I got to high school, I was like, oh, theater's free. <laughs> I can do that. Because um, I used to, like, work out myself. I used to go running. Like, when I was in sixth grade, I would run by myself because I couldn't, had no transportation to go cross country and things like that. Um, so I was like, okay, well, I'm going to be fit. I'm going to work out on my own as a sixth grader. Yeah, totally weird. That's when I started. Initiative. Right? Yes. Kind of weird, right? But, um, and then uh, I would do what I could, and then you know, I was like, I could do, I want to do theater, I want to try this. And um, when I went on stage, it was like, oh. That's where it clicked. Yeah, to. totally. Like, I just, I loved every, and I love community theater, I love doing theater, I love, because um, I think I was like 14 years old when I, you know, I first started like performing, performing. And uh, it's just, there's a sense of being in a group of people that you're all fighting for something together and creating art together. It's really, really beautiful. It helps kind of tie you guys together. Almost. Yeah, yeah. And you, you don't really, like, as a voice actor, you don't really get that a lot. Like, a lot of times you're in the booth with you, <laughs> you know? And I'm talking to characters who you don't actually hear their lines. So, like, when you're doing television and film and, and theater, like, you're actually talking to another person. But you can bounce off one another. Yeah, exactly. And, like, what you say is gonna, gonna change what I say and how I say it. Um, but when you're in a booth, you're you're basically like talking to yourself, and a lot of times they don't even give you the scripts, the full scripts. So you get your lines only, and you're like you have no context. Like I remember I was doing the voice of Kitty Cheshire in Ever After High, and um, she's a she's a daughter of a famous storybook character. You may be familiar with the Cheshire Cat, 
And um, so all the characters in Ever After High, it's a Mattel series, are, are children of famous storybook characters. And so I'm doing my, I'm doing my line this kitty, and she's like running through the forest, and they're like, oh no, she's drowning. She's actually told her she's, she's drowning in a, in a tea of, in a, in a vat of tea. I'm like, well, of course she is. You know, so you have to completely change. You have to start like gurgling and like doing your lines as a gurgle because you don't even know what's happening. They're just giving you words to say. And so there's no context at all. So you have to really trust the director's guidance on that. Um, but it's so fun to get to play like that with your voice. But it's so interesting that, because we've had other voice actors here, they've said a lot of the same things that one of the main, let's call it a hurdle uh, in the voice acting industry is that when you are recording, you cannot rely on other folks. You very rarely do ensemble cast, or I'm sorry, ensemble performances. So you really have to get into the loop of being able to see what else has been said beforehand and responding to it, or you run into situations where you're the first one to record and you just have to do an, an essentially a dry run. Yeah, because like, um, I mean, every script I did with Kitty, I would go into the studio and they would literally hand me the stack of, of words, and um, and you'd have like five minutes. And I'm like, I can't read 100 pages in five minutes. You know, there's no way. So you walk into the booth not having any idea what you're talking about, and you're just like, you read the line, you're like, mm, that's not, try it two more times. <laughs> you know? And then you're like, did that work? They go, yeah, a little higher, okay. A little more excited, okay. No, a little more sad, okay. You know, because you have no idea. Versus when I'm acting, I, you know, on camera, like I read everything in advance. I'm researching all the characters, researching my character, trying to figure out like who she is and where she came from and what her environment is and like what her parents were like and why she's like this. And you know, you dig into that and you're like, why, why is she responding to this character like this? What is his backstory? You know, so you're literally researching, researching, developing something from scratch versus in the booth, you're literally trusting your gut, trusting your instinct and kind of making it up as you go along which is like kind of improv versus, you know, versus preparation. Well, and then I was about to say that I think that with that, a lot of your background in improv and stage work, I was curious to know, like, did that help you prepare for any of these sort of hurdles you had to go through when at least first starting your voice acting? Sure, yeah, absolutely. I think, honestly, people ask all the time, too, like, how, you know, how can I be a star? I'm like, well, if I knew that, guys, I... <laughs> I'd be one already, but, um, but a lot of it is, is is the preparation, right? Like people expect to like go to Hollywood and like be a celebrity, but a lot of it is you know connections and who you know and who you're related to, and so it just doesn't happen overnight for a lot of people. Um, so it's training, it's hard work. It's like if you're trying to be anything in life, you know, whether it's an electrician or a doctor or anything, you have to even even working in a supermarket, learning how to do the cash register, you have to train for that. So a, a lot of you know acting is the same way you know putting in your ten thousand hours in whatever your craft may be and putting in that due diligence you know but a lot of it is also like some people are just better fit for certain things like um, I'm <laughs> there are things I'm not good at you know like someone's talking science you know and I'm like okay great and we're really talking about tech tech is like a great example like I'm not tech savvy like I would have like somebody like figure this out for me um, like how do I work this. Um, you know, so you have different skill sets. So following the skill set that you feel like passionate about and feel like you can handle and master is also a key. But yeah, training, training, training. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of it for acting is imagination, is tapping into that that inner child, you know, and and getting through the fear because when you first start, and like I still get nervous like every single time I perform, but. Being able to get through that, push through that, the whole show must go on thing is pretty true. And and just really like being creative and just letting it organically kind of come out of you in a lot of ways. Like finding the ability to be not unafraid, but to be courageous, right? Which is not the absence of fear. It's pushing through your fear to do what you're passionate about or care about. Well, we have some actually some tech stuff to talk about, not stuff that you've been vicariously involved in, okay. Okay, true. but I think we would be remiss if we did not at least discuss someone, or a character rather, that I feel a lot of folks are here to hear about. Let's talk a little bit about Bela. Oh, Bela. I love Bela. Do y'all like Bela? Oh, yeah. Oh, that was kind of sad. Do y'all like Resident Evil Village? Yeah. <laughs> So Resident Evil, uh, up until about Resident Evil 6, I think we can all agree, at least to an extent, had been experiencing a form of decline. 
you know, we, uh, ever since Resident Evil 4, we have begun to deviate from uh, the original idea and source material to a point that it no longer really resembled Resident Evil. So, uh, while I was not in the meeting at Capcom to discuss Resident Evil 7, I feel it went something along the lines of we need to have a return to norm while also innovating. Comes Resident Evil 7, which again, I think we can all agree, was a smash hit and a bit of a return to form. So, when Resident Evil 8 comes out, the highly anticipated sequel, we get these trailers and the gameplay demo featuring a, let's call her, well-endowed vampirus, <laughs> and, a, and her daughters, one of which, and is on a lot of the marketing and a significant part of the game, at least chapter one, uh, is Vela. So I was curious, when you got the role, did you audition for it? Were you connected with it via an agent? And when you got it, did you know how much of an impactful role that would be? Okay, I'm gonna probably forget one of those questions. So yes, remind so yeah, me kinda, whichever I, one yeah, I leave yeah, out, but those so are really great let's questions. Let's break it down. <laughs> let's first go with, did you get connected via an agent, or did you no. have to audition for it? When I talk about hard work, I'm gonna go and like, you know, like, spending the time studying your craft like you know that means like getting into community theater getting into high school theater you know like taking classes at a local playhouse that kind of thing it also includes like working your tail off i book 95 percent of all my work without any representation i have representation but i book all my work myself <laughs> pretty much um including resident evil village which is an act of god and i'm so grateful because most of the big things are not open for actors to submit to. It's a whole process we go through to submit. And any big project, whether it's a TV show, a feature film, a video game, an animated series, actors cannot submit. They have to have a representative, an agent or a manager, submit you. And the higher the agent in caliber, like an A-list agent versus a D-list agent, like the D-list agents, you will never, they will never actually be seen. They're, they're people a lot of the time. So you try to get to the high level, and it's it's hard to do. And um, so a lot of it, like I said, is the connections that you're related to, who you know, and that kind of thing. And sometimes people just get really blessed. Like you know, they're working at a restaurant, they get discovered. So that stuff does happen. But um, with me, and this is a kind of interesting little. In fact, I, uh, I had auditioned, I moved to LA like 13 years ago, almost, <laughs> close, and uh, I about, my gosh, like 11 or 12 years ago now, I auditioned for something that I found on one of the acting websites, and um, it was, I didn't know what it was, uh, and I auditioned, and then I auditioned again, and then you get callbacks, meaning they take you to the second level or take a round, and um, I ended up booking it, and uh, it turned out to be a video game. And I remember walking in and there was a room of like celebrities and I'm like, what did I just book? And I'm like, I know her, I know him. Oh, that's a theme, oh my gosh. And, um, but it, it got leaked. And uh, so they put on hold for three months. And it's the biggest thing I've ever booked in my life, right? Three months, then six months, nine months, a year and they canceled the game because someone posted i'm at sony and i'm working on a, working on a project didn't even say what the game was because we didn't even know we were working on the time and we were already shooting we were already doing like um so for video game work you you do um a lot of body scanning to start off with um they scan and this character would have looked just like me so they were not just doing like just the basic body scans they were doing facial scans I would sit like on a stool and I was going in a rotating circle, moving, and <laughs> they were capturing every element of my face, my hair, and my skin. I literally pulled my mouth open, like my lips, you know, my, my eyelids were flipped up, like I was making every facial expression known to man, making every sound, because like, they were literally crafting this character to be me. So we had days of that, and you know, and so it was devastating you know to lose that right and so but that casting director because she bizarrely apparently lets actors audition that aren't represented by major agencies in fact she doesn't prefer going through agencies she prefers not going through agencies and I've been there 13 years and she's the only one I've ever seen do that and she's the casting director and producer of Resident Evil so that's how I got into this is because she remembered me over the years she would call me back and by the way, that was a Resident Evil game. That was trashed and redone. So she remembered me over the years, and so every, because games take forever to make, right? 
So every two years, she would call me in and be like, here's something else for you to work on or try, and it could be a small thing, a big thing, and I would be like the top two every time. And then, so close. Yeah, and I'm like, wait, wait, yeah. And then um, Village happened, and that's, you know, oh my gosh, was that like three or four years ago? Because we spent two years making it. And uh, so I think it four years ago. So uh, Village came and didn't know that it was Village, just knew it was probably a video game or at least something interactive related because she was doing it. And uh, I got the audition. Well, she, I saw her on the breakdowns and I submitted for it. And then because I saw her name, I'm like, oh, I know her name. <laughs> <laughs> and then she called, and then also my phone rings. And that doesn't really happen in Hollywood unless you're like, you know, Brad Pitt or, you know, or something. So I'm like, someone's coming. I'm like, oh, oh. Yes. So what we're saying is Becca, Brad Pitt, kind of pretty comparable. You know, I mean, we're pretty close, you know. We don't hang out yet, though, but I'm working on it. Well, his family does live in Missouri. Yeah? Oh, really? Yeah, he's from, he's from Springfield. Maybe we can work on the back end of it, you know, try to get to know them. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so I picked the right kind of person there. Then, um, so, yeah, she called and said, do you want to audition for this? And I'm like, yeah. She's like, well, you want to come in tomorrow? <laughs> so, um, she, you know, I got, I get there and they give you sides, you know, which is like the script. And I, you know, you have like 10 minutes to go outside and try to work, you know, and, uh, and sometimes they give you in advance, it just depends on it. And um, actually for that one, I think they did give me the, the sides. It was like a monologue I had to perform in advance. And then for the callback. So when I got into the audition, I did it. I read for a witch, which is apparently vampires, which, because you don't know what you're really doing. And it was a monologue, and so I did that. And uh, she's like, oh, okay, hang on a minute. And then she gives me something else, which was Mother Miranda. And then um, I got called back for both roles. So they were trying to decide if I was going to be Bela. Because um, Bela was written as like the lead vampire sister. Um, the one that was like, cause, you know, we have the whiny Daniela, and then the sadist Cassandra. And they wanted someone who's like, kind of structure them all together and kind of have charge. And she was written that way, and so like, um, do you want Mother Miranda as Becca or do you want? And then Michelle, Michelle, Michelle was fantastic though. So they, they ended up like, you know, putting us in our, in our things. And, uh, but yeah, so it's interesting. A lot of times when you go audition for Resident Evil, you are in a room with Capcom Japan. Like when I first did one of these auditions, I walked in and I was like, for the callback, and I was like, what the, is the entire room of Japanese men just like, and I'm in a, I'm in a, a gymnasium, and I'm like, okay, I'm not nervous at all. Just supposed to have an intimidating. Yeah, totally. And they're all in suits, and you're like, oh, okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> what am I going to do? And then you have this huge volume, that's what they call it, it's like a gymnasium size, you know, you know, room, and kind of like this in a way. And it's pretty cool because they, they map off areas, like they put a big square, like stay in these lines, like in these, you know, lines on the floor. And like, I remember one time I had a door, like there was a door frame. Like here's a door if you want to use it. There are some boxes you want to use it. Here's a hatchet and a, and a, and a knife. So I'm like, oh, okay, great. You know, and like you just get to like, and you hope you know your lines because you're just going to go in and play in that space during, during this audition. It's so fun. It's literally, it's, it's like being a kid again to be able to go and just really, you know, create something um, out of your heart, you know, and just like passion build something there with them. Well, and credit where credit's due. I think it's utterly remarkable that you were able to do something that required you to be a, a tad bit vulnerable and creative in a space that you, A, have to do a little improv with, and also, B, surrounded by individuals that come from a culture that are pretty often, at least in business settings, very stoic, very intimidating. So the fact that alone, I think, should have awarded you the oh, part to begin with. Thank you, thank you. Now, you don't, a lot of times in audition rooms, you're not sure like how you've come across. You just have to go and give it your best shot and just hope. Sometimes rooms are receptive and they're warm, you know, but most of the times they're just like, you're like, is that bad, good, okay, th thank you. <clears throat> you know, you have no idea, so. So at this point, were you a fan of Resident Evil before? Were you at least familiar with the source material? Can you imagine how much I wanted this game when I like, finally found out what it was? Because I had been wanting to get back into Resident Evil for eight years. Like honestly, it's kind of, a, you know, it's like a bittersweet story because it's like you lose something. You're, you're, cause, you know, I was even, because we can, we can't post the game, but I was posting like, hey, I'm in something cool, guys, and I'm in my bubble cap, you know, suit and all this. Oh, I'm so glad we have a stormtrooper coming. Come on in. <laughs> and, um, you know, you, you're so excited, and then when that goes away, it's like, oh. I mean, there's a lot of losses. Like, I, I did a, sh a show. Is that me? Is that me? Just keep talking. 
Okay. <laughs> I did a show once where I, I flew out to another city and um, I was with the you know the lead actor and I had a scene with him and literally on set says, you know, I don't want this to be a two shot, which is a shot like you looking at us, this is a two shot. Two of our faces are in it. Like, no, I want it, I want it to be close up on me. And I'm like, uh, uh, I flew out here on my own dime on Easter weekend, and I changed the tickets several times, and I've had to pay the flight fee over $1,000, the flight, and then the change fees, and I put myself up into the hotel room and had to pay for the car, and literally, the director's like, no, 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 and after an hour, she gave in and turned the camera on him. And so I'm a voiceover in that, that TV show now. So it's like, things like this happen in LA, and it's, it's, it's to get Resident Evil after, you suffer a lot of losses, right? It's so beautiful and so exciting, you know, to be given so many, and for somebody like for Rosanna, the cast member just believe in me all those years and just keep bringing me in. She's like, no, there's gonna be something for you. She's like, we love you, there's gonna be something for you, we're gonna get you in this, you know? And so I'm like, yes, so finally get that. And Resident Evil is like, oh my gosh, it's iconic, right? I think it's been around like 27 years. The Capcom darlings that put Capcom on the map, we're talking about Mega Man, Pac-Man, Resident Evil. Boom, yes. So, like, to be part of the major three that literally put Capcom on the map, I mean, have to be, like, a huge honor. Yeah, and the, can I just say, are you fans, all the best fans out there? <laughs> like, I have a, a fan group, some of them are here today. Um, we have called Bayless Little Ones, because one of the lines is, where are you going, little one? And so, they call themselves Bayless Little Ones, and they have been so loving and so supportive. Um, the fandom is just so beautiful. I've gotten the most love, you know, out of them, and, and they're supportive of each other, which is so cool to see this community foster and grow and be kind to each other in a world that sometimes is not kind to one another. Well, and it's kind of funny, too, because Resident Evil is very much, a, at least now, it is again very much a horror franchise, yeah. and uh, Resident Evil 8 is no, uh, is no exception. So, and I also think it's very uh, heartwarming that the cast seems pretty close to it as well. You actually did a couple streams on Twitch with two of your co-stars in Resident Evil Village. We did so many streams. Um, so Maggie Robertson and Nicole Tompkins play, play two of the other characters. They did the dress, basically, and my mother um, is Lady D, and that's uh, Maggie, and Nicole is Daniela. And uh, yeah, we did a lot of streams, a lot, like because of the awesome fandom. Uh, it's funny when they, I mean, I, I'm, just, I'm a normal girl from Ohio, right? So <laughs> when I, you know, they're like, hey, Nicole's like, hey, do you want to sell some autographs? And I was like, people want to buy my signature? She's like, yeah, I think we can do well. You know, so we sold some of the patch, like a little bit, but not a lot. You know, I've sold some. I'm like, okay. And then, so let's, we'll give it a shot. Whoa, oh my gosh, fans like love this game. Because I think it's, it's just larger than life. Like you were talking about how, you know, horror, 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 and it's kind of going off track and kind of getting a little dismal, but they really made this game, I told some of the fans this, a mixture of like sci-fi and fantasy and on top of the horror and created this whole new realm of adventure. And that's why I think it was game of the year, you know? Like it was something beyond, it was like, it was fantastical. I mean, the size of Lady D, 11 feet tall, right? Fantastical, you know? Well, so Resident Evil 1 through 3, we can all agree, very much grounded in horror, uh, gross, grotesque, zombies and monsters, giant spiders, the whole lot. Resident Evil 4 comes around, we get a little bit more into the action realm, still bits of horror there, and no disrespect by Resident Evil 4 by any means. Then five and six go around, we're going way more into the action, basically not even a horror game anymore. So that return to form with seven was a breath of fresh air. However, as you were kind of alluding to, uh, and again, that was not in the meeting at Capcom, but I assume that they also came to the conclusion that a lot of us did is we also need something new. We can't just go back to Resident Evil 1 to 3, we might as well remaster 1 through 3, which actually in hindsight's a poor analogy because they did end up doing that. But, uh, yeah. but so we need to do something new in addition to going back to form. So that fantasy element that you were talking about, having some mystic sort of powers, back-end agendas, while still having that horror, I think is exactly what you said. Exactly. Why one game of the year. Yeah, yeah, and I, I, mean, I love like, Fantasy is like my number one, and sci-fi is my number two. So it's like dream game, right? You just play a fantastical creature. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> so we talked a little bit about it, that the motion capture, which is a medium that is not necessarily new to video gaming, however, is, I think, just getting out of its infancy. 
So I was curious, what was kind of your experience with using motion capture, and if you had any fun anecdotes with it? Yeah, I've, I've, I've been in motion capture, I guess. I started with Vicon, which is the maker of motion capture cameras, and I saw I was working with them for a while, and I was doing their shows with them, their trade shows with them, and like the big cons with them, performing as a mocap performer. And I started doing that, oh my gosh, like 11, 12, 12 almost years ago. And, um, and I, I did Gears of War 4, the Nightmare Reborn trailer, playing Anya. Um, so I've, you know, I, I've, had, I've had some stints in the Descendants video game, motion capture, and things like that. Um, it's, it's such a blast to do mocap because, okay, so for example, I did uh, The Evil Within uh, 2. I don't know if you guys have played that game. And I was like the woman screaming in the house, and I'm like, you know, help me, help me. And um, there was no mocap for that. So please don't think that was me who was doing this. I am so scared. Please help me. I don't know what's happening. I don't remember anything. So it's nice to not look like a twitching creature anymore. You know, I see that, and I'm like, it's such, a, it's such a great game. And then I'm like, oh, but if I did mocap for that. But you know, technology has gotten so much better. I mean, they're, you know, the AIing us to death, and that's that's a concern in itself. But um, it's great to get out there, and get my whole body into it, because I, I'm a talker. I know it's shocking. Um, but I've always been a talker, like chit-chatty, and um, so it's fun to be able to play with my voice and create different characters, but it's so fun to also get to put my whole body into something, because I'm a very physical person. I'm sort of running in the sixth grade in the country by myself and kids. I mean, come on. So it's so fun to be able to get my whole being into it. I mean, and think about Bela, you know, like, you know, what she's doing, she's like, <sighs> you know, it's not just like sitting in a booth saying lines, you know, I get to like be physical and move and you know, and like really embody the character. So it's cool because when you do mocap, you have, if you've seen the suit, probably, maybe, um, it looks like your pajamas, basically, only it's kind of thick pajamas, like have, you know, f you know, head to toe in basically black, black, you know, spandexy suit with little balls called markers, you know, put in strategic locations all over your body where your joints are. So they make you move your joints and they place the markers in those spots so that the cameras, Usually a Vicon, where I used to work. Uh, cameras all over the building are capturing every movement. Then you have a helmet with a camera that comes out, it kind of goes out over your face. So you're working like this. So if I'm looking at you, like when I'm looking at Ethan, when I'm gonna sight them, like I'm really looking at like through a camera the whole time trying to see his face, because it's capturing all your facial movements. When I first started doing mocap, they didn't have the camera on your face. They had markers all over your face. Yeah, so they put alcohol all over your face, used to, and sometimes they still add it. You might see, I think Gollum, um, Andy Serkin had, you know, some of those still on his face too. And so did um, Benjamin have a batch, but um, they, they make you wrinkle your face in all the different ways and put like little dots all over your face and black, black lines to mark it and then little dots so you look really attractive. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, so yeah, it's just fun for me to be able to be physical in something as well. They get to embody just not just the voice, but the the whole persona of the person. Well, and it sounds to me that it helps you actually convey more into the character. Yes. Like, well, case in point with us, like we, you and I both, I've noticed, talk about with our hands. <laughs> so I feel like if we were both sitting on our hands right now, it'd be a little bit more of a robotic, yes. like, oh, how was it to be in Resident Evil? And totally, totally. It's the Italian in me. Actually, I'm not Italian at all. <laughs> <laughs> so. I, I did want to touch on the fact that, you know, not only are you a voice actress, you know, you are an on-screen actress, a stage actress, and there's like a lot of commercial roles, and there's a, another avenue that you semi-recently uh, buried into, and that was uh, music videos as well. Yeah, yeah, so, some research. I was going to look at me doing my job. <laughs> so I was well curious. done. I was curious, because music videos are far different, much, much shorter than movies and video game parts. Uh, yet still very impactful to an artist's like success. That's so fun. So I was curious, was there any like special protocol that was involved in getting into uh, Ed Sheeran's music video? <laughs> Ed is so great, and it was probably the easiest one to get into I've ever done. Like it's it's so funny. It's like you try so hard for projects, and the one you try for the least, you're booked, and you're like, what? Um, yeah, he, he it, it was just a blast working with working on that set. Um, and if you've ever seen it, Overpass Graffiti is the song. And uh, Ed's basically lost his bus, and he's hitchhiking around trying to get back to his band. And so we pick him up, and you know, and we're on an adventure ride, and you know, it's total blast. Like there was literally like they just let us play. 
I had, I had very little direction. Like, okay, well, you know, you're gonna be, you know, running into almost a semi and almost dying. So go. And so it was, it was kind of like motion gaps. You get to play, and it was, yeah, it was so much fun. And you can see me. I highly recommend it. I'm the, the crazy scared person in the front seat of the car, and I'm looking at Ed, kind of flirting with him during it. It's great. Dream come true. Right, he's a sweetheart. So, Fellow redheads unite, right? <laughs> So we got, we got a lot of passionate folks in the audience, as we said, Resident Evil fans are some passionate bunch. Yes. So I want to make sure we have time to get to you guys to answer any questions you may have. But I did want to touch on one more thing. As, as a successful actress herself and a very accomplished individual, I did want to ask, was there anything looking back that you wish you could tell maybe young, aspiring actress, Becca, what she could have done maybe differently, any advice, you know, things yes. that, you know, things you wish you would have known back then that you know now. Yes, if you want to be an actor, go to a performing arts school. Like, I was so tempted to get, go to New York Film Academy. I really, really wanted to go. I was 17 when I started college, but um, I put myself through college. Like, I got um, a small scholarship, um, little grants, and a lot of loans. And so I, I paid for my four years, and I thought, well, if I go out of state, it's going to be a lot more money to go out of state. And um, my grandparents were getting older, and they're like my second parents, and I wanted to be there in their final years. So I made the decision to stay in Ohio for those four years. Everyone, woo we have an Ohio person, what? Of um, course you do, of course you do. Woohoo! Um, and if I would have gone to a performing arts school, they have what's called a showcase at the end of their four years, where they get to meet Hollywood agents and representatives, and you often get picked up right when you're like 21, because then you can still play like 18 to look younger, which is a category they, they need to keep filling. They don't need to keep filling the 30-year-old bracket, or the 40-year-old bracket, or the 50 or 60, 70, because they already have established performers who moved. A lot of people move with their kids. Like, they take their kid across the country and move them out there to start performing when they're kids so they can get them in early, because it's so hard to get in if you're past 20s, like early 20s. So if you get in, um, I, I, I didn't do that. So if you get in a showcase, then you get to perform for like, I mean, A level. If you do showcases in LA now, you can do them, but you're not seeing the A level, you're seeing the C and D level agents. But if you go into a prestigious school, you get to see by the big people. Um, you know, it's, I, I had a lot of awesome work that I have been blessed to be able to be a part of, but it doesn't count if you don't get in as a, as a young person. You can still be discovered. Things still happen, and I believe in God and godly miracles. So I'm still, you know, I mean, Resident Evil is one, right? Woo! So, um, but that's, that would be my recommendation. Unless you have a situation where you, you know, can't afford it, like, you know. Um, maybe there are a lot more scholarships now than there was back then that I knew about. So there might be ways for you to, if you're a student or you have a child, to actually get more scholarships to be able to help you provide for out-of-state tuition. And I do recommend it, because you get, uh, everyone I know who's gone to a prestigious school has actually gotten higher reps and have, have a better career. Well, and then, it sounds to me that a lot of us understand that acting is a very, it is full of disappointment and rejection, unfortunately. Yeah. A lot of maybe sleepless nights, a lot of hard work to get to where yeah. you are today. So I did want to ask, why? Of all the things you could have done, like I said, Becca, you were a very accomplished individual. I have no doubt you could have accomplished anything you wanted to. Thank you. Why this? Yeah, I would also say this. If there's anything else, and this is, this is gonna say like a very bad naysayer, but this is highly true. If there's anything else you'd rather do other than acting, that you're good at and passionate about, do it. Because it is, it is it's treacherous. The problem is there are some of us who just love performance so much that know you are gonna be happy doing anything else and settling for something else. Because of life, you don't wanna settle because we only have one, right? And so you don't wanna live with regrets. And so I would rather work hard and get the beautiful little blips that I get, you know, the Ed Sheeran music video, Resident Evil game, Eddie, you know, Kitty Cheshire, Nashville, those little like TV shows, you know, voice projects, films, whatever I can do, and have those moments of pure joy that never experience in them at all. Um, one of the biggest reasons I guess I became an actor is I can talk and talk, and it may not have a strong effect, but storytelling is what unites us as people. It's something that 
has crossed through generation to generation to generation. We are captivated by stories. Whether it's a music video, a video game, a TV show, or film, we're pulled into that by our very nature. And I don't mean Americans, I mean the world. We love storytelling. So if I perform a character that is well done, well written, well scripted, well played, well acted, it will touch your heart. It will make you more empathetic, make you sad, make you happy, make you cry, make you see something in a new light you've never seen before. Like a Pruitt may talk and you may be like, oh, that's interesting. But if my character performs, you're moved, you're scared, you're thoughtful, you're like, hey, what is she doing? Why is she doing that? Oh my gosh, I didn't know that they ever had gone through that before. Like, oh, now I see why they feel that way. Like, so you, you open yourself up to another person's world and there's more empathy that's built and more human connection and love. And that's something I want to be a part of. And that's why I do it. I can't think of a better answer than that. <laughs> All right, guys, we are at the point where this is your opportunity. If you have a question for Becca Pruitt, please raise your hand and I will walk my way to you. Be gentle. <laughs> You know, one of these days I really need to learn to use the stairs. Yeah, there's steps right there on the line. I know, I know. Now, while he's waiting for that question, let me ask you a question from over here. You say north of Cincy. Yes. Um, where north Hamilton? Well, actually, my mom lives in Hamilton now, but I grew up in Westchester. Westchester. Yeah, Liberty Township. Liberty, Liberty Township. The Lakota School township. District, that area. It's still yeah, a township. Yeah. They, have, yeah, yeah. they have the post office. My That's mom lives township. right on the border of Liberty Township, but yeah. we grew up in Liberty Township. Liberty, Indiana, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, are you from Ohio? I am. Oh, where? Hamilton. Shut up. I was born in Fort Hamilton Hospital. Oh my gosh. My, 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 my cousins are there in Hamilton. From where Liberty is, my grandmother was 10 minutes away, morning sun. Yes. Morning sun, Indiana. We around the corner there. She yes. there until she passed. And my dad lived in Gratis. I don't know Gratis. Gratis is north, almost to Eaton. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. 10 minutes north okay. before you get to Eaton. And then we grew up in, in Dayton for a while. So I, all I, that area. I lived in Dayton for a while. Yes, ma'am. All right. Miami's bird, the uh, burger wagon. <laughs> yes, ma'am. All I have to say to you is OH. I owe. Woo -hoo! No one. <laughs> Guys are kindred spirits. Absolutely. I'm sorry, is there a question out there? Yes. Go ahead. Yes, Go ahead. <laughs> What's your name, by the way, real quick? I'm Scott. I'm the audio guy. Scott, the audio guy. Nice to meet you. We'll talk more later. Okay. <laughs> How do you develop the voice of a character? Oh, that's a good question. Um, Playtime, I would say. So when I do auditions, I usually turn in um, a couple options. I can't turn in like 15, because they'll be like, I have thousands of people to listen to. There's no way we're gonna get through them all. So I try to, I look at the character, I read, they usually give it a little description. Sometimes it's a great description, sometimes it's very minor. And uh, then you just have to use your imagination. And I give a few options. And then um, the favorite one I, I put in the front and I send it off. For Kitty Cheshire, for example, I was booked um, for a certain, for a, like a voice that's similar to mine. And uh, when I got in the room, they're like, oh, you have a little bit of vocal fry. And that's why we loved you for Kitty, because Kitty is mischievous and um, always up to something and they like that little like raspy sound. And I'm like, oh, but we realized in Monsters High, there's a character that's similar with also a vocal fry rasp, so we want, we don't want that. So we had to find something else. After I booked it, they didn't realize until after I booked it. So, okay, so we want you to do all these different voices. Let's see what you have. And so I literally was in there for a long time doing every voice I could possibly think of for Kitty Cheshire, including like, when I was seeing some lines. I mean, I, it's like the most chaotic. So they decided they want her to cross between Shirley Temple and Marilyn Monroe. Do that. I'm like, okay. All right, anybody else? Raise your hand. Hello, Becca. Hello, Kyle. And hi, Zoe, by the way. <laughs> so mine's kind of a silly one, but I'm going to ask, what is, other than man blood, what is your favorite scent or smell? <laughs> as Bela or as Becca? As Becca. Favorite scent or smell? Oh my gosh, that's a good question. You may have stumped me. Okay, I need a moment to think. Favorite scent. Hmm. I think the smell of fall and um, like autumn, because I live in LA, the land of no fall or autumn, and I love that time of year. And 
even here, that crisp, there's a smell to the crispness of the air, even here. You know, there, I don't see a lot of leaves changing yet where I didn't, but I think somebody was cutting the grass as we were driving. And I was like, I smell autumn in Missouri. And I was very coming, and I was like, I love it. So that sounds really silly, but I, I'm a Midwestern girl. Like, I am, I'm not, to me, when I first ended up moving to LA, I hesitated for a long time, so I was like, these people like beaches, and they're like, oh, we're like, you know, Baywatch bikinis, and I'm like, they all like run around in the sun, I'm like, that's not me, you know? Like, I like hiking, and the woods, and nature. <laughs> um, thank God there are a lot of hikes that you can do in LA, um, and in the surrounding areas, but um, you don't get that, that false sense, so I, I love that. Alrighty, uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Unique question, thank you. <laughs> All right, we've got that. time for two more questions. Raise your hand if you have a question for Becca Pruitt. I, I thought you would have said Skyline Chili, the smell of Skyline Chili. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't have understood that one. Yeah, Skyline Chili is like, um, it's a... Staple. Yeah, of Cincinnati. And uh, is that the one with cinnamon? Because like yes. gold starts at this. That's, yes. One has chocolate, one has cinnamon in the mix. Absolutely. And you put it over spaghetti. How interesting is that, right? It's actually pretty good, as long as you have the cheese on it. Yeah. Okay, next question. Hey! Hello again, Becca. Hey, Jordan. <laughs> um, so, my question might be a little interesting because when we were talking, I don't think we ever really discussed this one, but it's no question that you absolutely love Resident Evil, since you're a part of it. But have you ever gotten the chance to actually uh, play through any of the games in the series? Oh yes, um, I am wretched. I'm a wretched gamer. I think a lot of us uh, video game actors are, because we, you know, like they were asking Neil once, um, who you know, plays Heisenberg, like, how do you think of playing the game? He's like, I haven't played it yet. I'm, I'm working, I'm auditioning, I'm performing. It's hard for us to have like the time to do it. And um, I never got to play as a kid. Like I, I wasn't allowed even playing video games. We couldn't afford, you know, you know anything like an Xbox or a PlayStation or like that. So I, so when I when I do play games, like it's funny. Like a five year old will beat me. I'm like, oh, oh, slow down. You know, um, it was fun um, killing Bela in a weird way. It was like kind of bittersweet. So, so I have played the game, but I'm terrible. <laughs> and I will fully admit it, and the fans have been gracious and forgiven me for my lack of video gaming mastery. <laughs> I hope you will too. <laughs> Alright, got time for one more. You didn't raise your hand. Okay, embarrassing. <laughs> now you must ask a question. <laughs> well, I, was gonna say, I, I have one last one in case anybody wants to take it from me. Yes, yeah, someone wants to take it from me. Stairs is done. Stairs, stairs, well done. <laughs> Hello. Hi. So, Resident Evil 8 is not my favorite game, but it's theirs. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I am not a Resident Evil, Evil girly. I don't play games very often. No worries. <laughs> but I do love the fandom as a whole. Do you also get to see all the fandoms of, like, I know it's a horror game, but all the found family that has come from it, how it's brought the fandom together? Oh, yes. I am kept in the loop uh, a lot about that. Um, it was a Discord that was created um, called it's a, well, Bela's Little Ones, um, the name of the fandom. And I didn't create that. Like Some actors and voice actors create Discords, but I didn't. They created it with, with you know asking my permission. and. And uh, they are amazing. The admins of that group keep me in the loop. And um, I actually love my fans so much that I have personally interacted with some of them as much as possible. And, uh, but they're great because they always keep me abreast of what's going on, tell me. And then I have uh, Jordan who helps like tell me, like he's kind of like, kind of the middle man. He's like, okay, so and so saying this, Molly is saying this, and this is what's happening now, or whatever. And so they kind of keep me in the loop. So I kind of always know what's happening um, because he's able to navigate it for me because I can't, you know, I'm terrible at looking at all my social media messages. When the game came out, like, oh gosh, guys, like I got thousands of messages in my inbox uh, for Instagram alone, and I literally, I couldn't get through them. I, I, and like one point, my friend told me, you have to shower, honey. <laughs> you have to brush your teeth. You need to stop trying to reply, reply to everybody. I was like, yes, but I reply to everybody always. Like, life has changed now. 
now you have a fandom and you, you, you have to like not neglect your health. You have to sleep, you have to do things. So I was like, okay, because I'm very much a people person when it comes to like wanting to love on people and make them feel like they're individually seen and noticed. And um, so I'm like, well, can they write you? And if anything's big, I can at least know so that I can be present for that. And he's like, hey, for the big stuff, I'll have them contact me and then I'll tell you. So that's kind of the system we've devised so that I'm always in the know. If there's somebody that gets thrown out of the fandom because they are like harassing somebody or trolling somebody, like they tell me. So I pretty much know what's happening at all times. But I also know, well, anything important. I don't know like, hey, I took my trash out today. I don't like that stuff. But I, I, I also know like if there's any bullies and I also know that the people who are running it are so amazing that they, they've made it such a protective community um, of welcoming and openness and it's so beautiful. Like, that's what, to me, like some of the best things about being in this game are, is that community that was developed out of it because it's such a filled with love and support. So thank you for being a part of it. Even though you're not a big gamer, that's okay. I'm not great at it either. I love that you're a part of that and that you support that. So thank you. <laughs> All right, well, Becca, that's a Q&A. Woohoo! So before we end off, is there any final thoughts you'd like to leave us on? Sage-like wisdom? Sage-like wisdom. I just thank you all for coming out and for playing the game and supporting us because the game is what it is for a lot of reasons. It is incredible workmanship in crafting by Capcom Japan. They have done such a wonderful job creating the story, the vision, the look, the feel, like the cinematics per se of the animation. Um, and they brought a great team of, of actors who would be a part of it. But if y'all didn't play that game, we would not be game of the year. If you all didn't support us and send us love and come out and see us and, and hype it up, we wouldn't be where we are now. And so thank you all for making it what it is. Like, I want you guys to know that you are loved and you are supported and you are seen and you are so important to us. And we love, we love our gamers and we love, we love you for giving us so much love as well. And you know, I just wish you all awesome things and I challenge you all to go, whatever you're passionate about in life, whatever that is, you know, gaming or something else, you get gaming scholarships nowadays, by the way, y'all, so that's pretty cool. But whatever that is you're passionate about, go for it with all your heart because you don't want to live a life and regrets, right? Love you all. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Becca Pruitt. If you have not already chatted with her some more or got your own signed photograph or photo, Go ahead and do very quickly before she flies out. Go to the vendor hall and she'll be right there with all the guests. Real quick, if we all want to stand up. Anybody who wants to be in the picture, just kind of circle around the main stage. Becca, if you want to come over here. I'm leaving in a few hours, so that's legit. Okay, one, two, three. That was just for Spider-Man, there you go. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you.